Welcome everybody, my name's Ben, we are the Beard Guys, and today I'm bringing you 10 of the best mods available right now for Ark Survival Ascended, all of which I've tried and tested on the console version of the game, so you know that they work and are cross-play compatible. There's tons of great mods out there that do all sorts of crazy things, but for today's list, I've tried to stay clear of anything too game-breaking that would make the game too easy. There's a mix of quality of life mods and content focused mods in the list today, all of which I like to use myself, but if you have any other mods that you love to use and you think I should check out, then let me know down in the comments below. I'll put a full chapter listing in the video description as well as the names of and links to all of the mods mentioned in today's video. And if you find any of this useful at all, then why not drop a like and subscribe to the channel to make sure you stay up to date with all of my Ark Survival Ascended content. So first up on today's list is a simple performance performance mod by jbert98. Whilst this mod will work on PC and console, it's particularly useful for console players, especially if you're on maybe the Xbox Series S or some hardware that is struggling a little bit with performance. What this mod essentially does is just run a list of console commands every time you load up the game with that mod active that make adjustments to your game to improve performance. If you're playing on PC, then it will just run through these three commands at the top. But if you're on console, there's a whole list of other commands that it will run in order to improve your performance. A lot of these commands are ones that you may have seen me mention in my previous videos on improving your performance in Arc. So this is a nice, simple way of just automating that process of entering commands when you load up the game. If you want to see your actual FPS once you're in game, don't forget you can open up your console command menu and then use the command stat FPS. And that's gonna give you your FPS counter on screen so you can see that in the right hand side here. If this is a bit too heavy handed for you and it's running a few too many commands and you're not really a fan of it, then you can always manually add some in. If you want some more information on that, I'll put a link to some of my other videos down below where I go through how to use console commands on Arc Ascended Console Edition, as well as listing some of the ones you can run in order to increase your FPS without making your game look too terrible. Next up on today's list is the mod Custom Dino Levels by Kitsy Catty. What this mod basically does is change it so that dinosaurs have an even chance of spawning at any level in the game. By default, high level dinosaurs are much rarer and you see a much more common dispersion of lower level dinosaurs. With this mod active, however, you'll see many more high level dinos rather than it taking absolutely ages in order for you to search around and find those 130s or 150s to tame. It does make it a lot easier to find those top level dinos, so it does make the game easier in that regard. But obviously, it does make it harder because you're going to bump into high level dinos that you have to fight more often. I think this one's particularly useful if you're playing solo, if you're playing a small tribe, or maybe if you're someone who doesn't get to play a ton of the game like I do, and you don't have the hours to commit to spend days trying to find a 150 to tame. If you're playing on PC, or if you've got this installed on a server, then it does actually have three different options that you can select. By default, it has the equalized level setting that we just talked about, but it also has an option for Ragnarok-like levels, which means it will use the same settings that you see on maps like the center, Ragnarok and Crystal Isles, where higher levels have a boosted chance to spawn, but they're still rarer to find than lower levels. And then there's also a high levels option where it inverts the normal chart. So there's a much higher chance of finding higher level dinos than there is for low levels. Next up, we have the Utilities Plus mod by Blitzfire911. And this mod just adds in a few useful reusable items that just make life in the arc a little bit easier. These include a reusable bowler, reusable flare gun, reusable grappling hook, parachute, spear, and torch, as well as some fancy binoculars you can try out. They do make the game a little bit easier because you don't really need to use as many resources to keep crafting endless amounts of bowlers or parachutes, but given that those things are generally pretty cheap anyway, I don't really think it has much of a hit on your gameplay. Being able to just craft a reusable bowler early on so you can save yourself from getting endlessly killed by raptors and other small dinos is really, really nice and just takes away from some of the annoying frustrations early game. Reusable parachute, spear, and grappling hooks obviously pretty handy as well. The binoculars are pretty much a set of early game tech binoculars, but I find I tend to use the spyglass, which I'm going to mention in the next mod. 
So fourth in our list is the Super Spyglass Super Binoculars mod by Lord Lucifer. This gives you two different spyglasses you can use that will show you detailed dino stats, which is really handy for taming and breeding. There's the Super Spyglass Advanced, which just works by toggling it on and off. You don't actually get out anything and point it anywhere. So if I hit down on the D-pad here and then start looking at dinos, you'll see this information comes up at the bottom of the screen and it shows me the levels that that dinosaur has into different stats. It's got 18 into stamina, 20 into food, 20 into weight, 22 into health, etc, etc. If we go over to a tamed dinosaur and have a look, you'll see that it gives us the post tame level. So the stamina 24 on the left hand side, that's its base levels before it was tamed, plus its post tame levels. And then the 17 next to that is the how many levels I've put into that manually after it's been tamed. There's a few different mods that do this kind of thing, but I like this one. I like how the UI looks and where it sits. It's nice and simplistic. It also gives you this other spyglass option, which is a little bit more useful, I'd say, where you actually get a spyglass out and look at things. You can zoom it in and zoom it out on controller. That's the RT and RB or R2 and R1 if you're on PlayStation. And also when you're looking at something and you press RT or R2, it will actually lock on and keep that display up there. So you see if I keep looking at it and moving off, it disappears. But if I press right trigger and then look away, it just shows those stats on the screen, even though the bird has flown away. It also comes with these super binoculars, which are just the tech binoculars, but you can craft them at level 30. Next on our list is the Architect Structures Remastered mod by Gimilcad. And this is a really nice overhaul of the building mechanics in the game. Gives you loads of options you can do with structures. You can see here, for instance, we've actually been stacking foundations, which is a really neat trick you can do. You can see all of these things at the bottom here that I've crafted are marked as ASR. If we place a foundation here, we've got an option for a normal foundation or a half. We do a normal, chuck that down, another one next to it. I can then place a foundation on top of that and then a foundation on top of that. If we do a half one, you will see here, we can plonk that on there and we can do some half height things as well. It's got tons of things in it. It's hard to go through it all really. There's new glass. There's loads of variants of other different things. There's all these nice glass panes. There's behemoth walls you can build. There's different angles sloping roofs. We've got steep roofs and shallow roofs you can build. And it just lets you do all kinds of crazy stuff that I've still only really just started to touch the surface of. It also adds automatic doors that you can configure. I did have a separate automatic doors mod, but you don't need one if you've got this because they do it for you. So your doors will open and shut automatically for you. You can even go up to them and configure them if you don't want to do it at all. You can make it manual. You can make it so it auto closes only rather than open. So you still have to press to open, but they'll just close behind you. And you can even set a delay on it, say maybe five seconds. So when you do go through, it'll wait a little bit before it closes behind you. So really handy little mod with all sorts of bits in it. You can see here we've got half height pillars with different variants on them. You can do thin pillars, very thin pillars, different looking stone blocks. You can do pillars and beams at all sorts of weird angles. And it just gives you loads of options for building. In order to craft these, by the way, you need to build the ASR crafting bench, which looks a bit like a smithy. And then you go up to that and you can craft these items in the bench. Next up, we have the Silent Structures mod by Salmon Rider. Very simple one. This just means you can turn down the volume of various noisy structures in your base. So you can see we've got all our air conditioners running here. And what this mod does is give you this option in your pause menu for structures volume. We can configure this to be louder or quieter. You see, we can turn this right up. And we can now hear these much more loudly. And then if we go back into structures volume, we can actually turn this all the way down and we'll pretty much not be able to hear them at all. Completely turned off the sound of the air conditioners. Another quick and simple quality of life mod we've got today is Stop the Steel Ascended by Findire. All this mod does is it stops the Pegomastics and the Seagulls from stealing your stuff. It changes the Pegos so they're now knockout tamed rather than passive tamed. And it just takes away two little slightly annoying things that you no longer have to worry about. Back to some more new content for the next mod, we've got Klinger Additional Boats. This adds in a new large boat you can use, the Catamaran, which as you can see compared to the original raft is absolutely massive. You can get up to seven by five foundations on it, so you can do some really big boat builds if you're into that. And it also has different sail options you can put onto it if you want to change the look of it. As well as that, it has better health than the default raft, can turn in place, it can even reverse slowly as well. You can see 
see here, these are foundations. We've chucked on one of these new boats. There's no floor tiles on this. This is all foundations, very hastily thrown on, but you can see the sheer volume of them. You can actually fit onto these things. And if you're someone like me, who's quite into boat bases and sailing around in taming rafts, then having one of these is gonna be great fun for you. Our next content mod for today is Alpha Oceanic Platforms by Mateus RP11. This adds a few new structures to do with building on water and looking after water tames. It lets you build these platforms here. This is one individual thing we've built and it gives you this big underwater cage. I've actually added these doors on myself. These are beer moth doors and they will snap into these doorways. You see if we just remove this one, this is how it looks by default, and then you can add doors onto it. Gives you a very cool underwater cage where you can keep your tames, as well as this lip around the edge on which you can place things as if it was just normal ground. So you can put foundations on here and build up a whole base around this if you wish. There's also a version that just has the middle covered like this with nothing underneath. And then there's an open version with no cage as well, like this one here. As well as that, it gives you some floating foundations you can use for individual small bits of floating stuff in the sea. You can see these here, these are all floating foundations that I've built and you can just plonk them down uh, any way you like. It's got the same stuff for thatch, wood, stone, metal and tech and really helps expand your options for doing stuff in the sea without just having to slam a load of stone beer moth gates down and it look a bit rubbish. Now, last up on the list today, we have got Alpha Everything by Hexen Lord. This is just a fun little mod that basically makes it so that any creature on the map can have an alpha version of itself or at least any tameable creatures so you can see here we've got a level 50 alpha carbo and they have an increased size increased stats and also give extra xp it doesn't seem to change the behavior of them so herbivores that aren't aggressive will still not be aggressive unless you attack them and the ones i've killed so far don't seem to drop any extra loot but i do just enjoy the novelty of occasionally seeing a giant glowing red herbivore knocking around the map so that's everything for today. I hope you found some of that useful. I've got plenty more Arc Ascended tips and mod videos planned, so make sure you like and subscribe if you want to catch those. I'd love to do some more mod videos, maybe a deeper dive into some of these mods. So let me know in the comments if that's something you might be interested in watching. Thanks so much for watching. My name's Ben, we are The Beard Guys, and I'll see you next time.